Serpentor's invasion of Springfield launches into full throttle action when the enhanced cyborg mutants attack everyone in sight. Which army will win and how many Joes and Dreadnoughts will get caught in the crossfire? Let's find out in our review of G.I. Joe, a real American hero number 309 from Image Comics. See you in three. Welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of G.I. Joe, a real American hero number 309. Nobody knows G.I. Joe better than Larry Hama. If issue number 309 is any indication, Hama's talent for military action stories with a slight sci-fi twist is only getting better with time. Mixing equal parts action, military tactics, and even some emotional drama, this issue is as pristine an example of a war comic done right as possible. When last we left the Joes in G.I. Joe Real American Hero number 308, Serpentor launched his long gestating attack against Springfield by dropping cybernetically enhanced mutants onto the town from custom designed bombers provided by Revanche. Coincidentally, Zartan and the Baroness led the Dreadnoughts into the heart of Springfield just when Scarlet arrived with the Ninja Strike Team. Meanwhile, the captured Joe Recon team on Cobra Island escaped their holding cell and made a curious discovery in Dr. Mindbender's lab. That brings us to the current issue, which is G.I. Joe, Real American Hero number 309. The battle for Springfield continues in earnest. Enhanced cyborgs land in the middle of the town to attack any resistance from Cobra Commander's forces. At first, it looks like Cobra Commander's soldiers are outmatched since the enhanced cyborg body armor is nearly impenetrable. But an armored Cobra Commander leaps into action strangely enough, to show his troops the vulnerable point on mutant bodies to take them down, sending a rallying ripple through the defensive forces of Springfield. In other words, Cobra Commander is the hero of his army. After months of planning and maneuvering, Larry Hama steps on the battle gas and doesn't let up for one panel throughout this entire issue. The opening battle exchange helps the readers understand how tough the enhanced cyborgs are, which is pretty tough, and Cobra Commander's impressive performance creates a morale boost that shows the readers this fight is far from a one-sided route. Meanwhile, we catch up with Zartan, who's helping the Baroness escape their crashed truck while the Dreadnoughts free up their thunder machine to lay down cover fire against oncoming maggots and hiss tanks. Technically, Zartan is on the same side as Sorpentor, I guess, maybe. Really, he's on the side of himself and Destro. But the enhanced cyborgs and Cobra Commander's forces are attacking anything that moves, so they have to fight and survive against everything and everyone. This scene involving Zartan and the Baroness accomplishes two key points that could come into play later. Maybe, we're guessing, don't know for sure. First, Serpentor's invasion of Springfield has at least one rogue element running around that could help or hurt the invasion effort, depending on what skirmish Zartan and the Baroness and the Dreadnoughts get caught up in. Second, the possibility of friendly fire on either side of the conflict goes up significantly. Elsewhere, Scarlet and the Ninja Strike Team stealthily work their way through the town, looking for vantage points and reporting the developments back to the pit. The team happens upon a crashed police cruiser with the driver still trapped inside. Unfortunately, the driver recognizes Don Moreno when the team moves to help, and he begs for forgiveness because he is the cop who opened fire on Don's parents in issue number 306. Unable to free the police officer when attacking forces arrive, the ninja team is forced to flee. Back on Cobra Island, the Joe Recon team loads up the frozen body, sort of, and Dr. Mindbender on a transport. The undead clone in the container is well protected and well preserved, according to Dr. Mindbender, but the team isn't taking any chances. They speed away to a secret location near the shore to uncover an inflatable dinghy as a means of escape. The issue concludes with Cobra Commander continuing to rally his troops, but not in a way you think. There's a little bit of a bait and switch going on. Serpentor deciding to get his hands dirty because there's nothing like showing your troops up close and personal how to do it. And Don opting to go AWOL. Overall, Larry Hama delivers a fast-paced, action-heavy issue that keeps multiple teams moving towards their respective goals. Hama's dramatic elements hit as hard as the ordnance, and there's no telling where this story goes next. In other words, this is a fantastic war comic that keeps you guessing and is not predictable in the least. Let's switch gears a minute and talk about the art. Paul Pelletier and Tony Cordos deliver a kinetic set of visuals to masterfully complement Larry Hama's tense war drama. The sheer volume of disparate character designs is impressive because everybody's got a different costume, everybody's got a different set of armor or some kind of mutation that requires different creative thought. 
and you see it all in large and small detail. Plus, the panel compositions are exceptional. The art team has been firing on all cylinders since taking over for Chris Mooneyham. Although we miss Mooneyham's art, the art team we have on board is doing just as well. Let's take a step back and look at the big picture. If you're new to this title or our reviews of this title, you may wonder where it fits in with the interconnected Energon universe from Skybound. Although this series comes from Skybound after it was acquired from the IDW, it sits outside the interconnected Energon universe. So don't look for any Transformers to show up anytime soon. This is 100% pure G.I. Joe. Final thoughts, what do we think about G.I. Joe, a real American hero number 309? It's a fast paced action fest from start to finish. Larry Hama keeps a surprising number of teams moving in different directions to keep the variety and dramatic complexity high, and the art team's output looks great. The series is one of the consistently best comics that comes out of Skybound since they acquired the Hasbro license, and we're hoping they can keep up the same level of art and writing quality for a very long time. Therefore, G.I. Joe Real American Hero number 309 earns an 8.8 .8 out of 10. If you're a lover of war comics that lean towards action and adventure, it doesn't get any better than this. But what do you think? Do you think the standalone G.I. Joe comic is the best thing to come out of Skybound? Give us a thumbs up if you agree, and leave us a comment below if you prefer another Skybound title such as Transformers as an example. Also, remember to click on the link in the description to read the written review and buy this comic to help support the channel. So thank you very much for joining, and stay tuned through the outro for more reviews just like this one.